This country always needs good citizens. Hi, I'm George Tanner, and this is the iCitizen Forum. Today we're off the University of Maryland, where we'll be speaking to Peter Levine, who is the director of the Center for Information and Research on Citizenship, Learning, and Education. So what he doesn't know about American citizenship is not worth knowing. This is Peter Levine's book, The Future of Democracy, and Developing the Next Generation of American Citizens. And in it specifically, he talks about um, what is wrong with uh, America's youth and why they're not civically engaged in the way that people like my parents and your parents' generation were. People are voting in less and less numbers. Um, people aren't joining any voluntary associations. People aren't volunteering as much as they used to. Uh, people know less about the news. They're less likely to read newspapers or even keep up with the news on the internet. So Peter, if we encourage citizen participation in high school, is it something that kids will have for the rest of their life? One of my favorite studies was a study that followed the high school class of 1960 and is still following them now. It asks about um, extracurricular activities like student government and school newspaper and it finds that the students who were involved in those are much more involved in civil society today than their peers and there are a lot of statistical controls and everything and it looks as if being part of it at age 17 really has an effect that lasts for your whole life. Are you a lost cause if you're not involved in the school, high school paper or yeah. can you get these things back when you're older? Right, so that's a good question. So I guess my feeling is it would be immoral to write off the older generations because they didn't get powerful, positive, formative experiences. Like my generation is Generation X and we look, we look very bad statistically in terms of all our participation. But if you have X amount of money and you want to put it into increasing participation, you should put it into young people. Why did Generation X get such a bad deal, do you think? The big um, political events were not terribly motivating. I mean, we always, I think we thought that our older brothers and sisters and younger parents had gotten, you know, the sexual revolution and rock and roll and Vietnam and assassinations and stuff, and we had crack and AIDS and divorce. and um, So they were, that was not very motivating. But then it wasn't a very good period for the... Uh, well, it wasn't that great a period, I don't think, for American education. Certainly the civic stuff wasn't done very well. Thirty years ago we had tear gas and National Guards men on campuses. It's very surprising that we should have a war which is deeply unpopular among young people uh, and an administration which is deeply unpopular among young people at very little public protest. So if everyone's against the war, why aren't we protesting? Yeah, well, I, I guess there's a several reasons that have been offered, so none of this is original. One is that there's no draft. So the stakes are not as high for individuals. That's a cynical explanation because it suggests that back in the 60s, people were really protesting in their own self-interest. Another explanation is that um, actually they're, they're great techniques for social mobilization. They just don't involve walking around with signs anymore. Now you have Facebook and um, now you have email and so on. So it's actually happening. It's just that the technology of it is outmoded, it, which is, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's plausible because why should you walk around with a sign? It's, it's a particular thing to do. I guess the third, the third explanation is that people don't have the repertoire of skills. So they're angry, but they don't know how to pull a protest off. What are the consequences of the internet for citizenship engagement? Well, I think nobody knows what this, what, what'll happen. It's changed so fast, but um, one scenario that I think is very plausible is that those young people who have a lot of skills, particularly high literacy, um, and are very interested in political and civic issues and are motivated will use the new tools to become more powerful than they ever have been before and will be very energized by it. And another whole group, which would be larger than 50% of the population, will just not really have any interest in civic and political stuff, won't have any motivations, very low confidence, and so they just won't use it at all. And it won't be able to recruit them in the way that traditional things did, like unions. And so they, they will actually be a widening gap in participation. So you think the internet can actually harm participation rather than help it? Yes, I do. I think it can make it more e unequal. So sort of the total amount would be more, but the distribution would be worse. So what are the consequences of that for political society? Well, they're the exacerbation of a lot of late 20th century trends, which all favor the, the highly educated and affluent in terms of having their voice heard. So. Um, We've lost a certain infrastructure of things like unions, activist churches, local community groups that used to multiply the power of working class people 
and we've gotten more and more sophisticated tools for empowering those people who know how to use the tools. Wow, that was a stark warning from Peter Levine of what will happen to the future of democracy if we don't work hard to get everyone involved. Next week, we'll be rocking the vote. This is George Turner, this has been the iCitizen Forum, and we look forward to seeing you next time.